Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. A company called Paul Rubens recently sent me some of their watercolors to try out and they are fabulous. In this video, I'm exploring this lovely set of 24 artist grade watercolor pan paints and I'll show you step by step how to paint a vibrant sunflower. The Paul Rubens Artist Grade Watercolor Pan Sets are some of the best paints on the market when it comes to quality and cost. According to Kimberly Crick, a fellow YouTuber who does extensive research on pigment quality and light fastness, only three of the 24 colors in this set are somewhat fugitive. These three colors, this tree green, matter red, and Prussian blue are not light fast. They do fade after a little bit of time, but the other 21 colors hold up really well when exposed to light for long periods of time. This is so important if you plan on displaying and selling your work. The set is packaged in a pink heavy duty box with a lovely chamois wrapping the matching tin case. So it makes a gorgeous gift. Right off the bat, I was so impressed by the packaging. Inside are foldouts with info about the pigments. They're all in Chinese since these paints are made in China. Each pan is meticulously packaged with a paper wrapping that must be removed before use. This takes a little bit of time, but it's, again, it's kind of like unwrapping a Christmas present. So much fun. Now, before doing any serious painting with a new pan set, it's always a good idea to swatch the colors first, just so that you get an idea what they'll look like on the paper. I created a swatch chart in the exact order the paints are lined up in their tin, carefully labeling the colors. Now adding a sharpie line actually helps you see which pigments are completely transparent and which ones are semi-transparent. I was delighted to discover that this set is beautifully pigmented and responsive and is a perfect assortment of warm and cool primaries as well as convenience colors like purples, greens, and browns. If you guys want to try this sunflower painting, by the way, I've included a link in the description to the reference photo taken by yours truly and I'll also link out to all of the supplies used in this video including these amazing paints. My paper today is a 7 by 10 inch block of Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press cotton paper and I'm using a couple of new brushes I'm just trying out from Trakel. I'm using a synthetic Kalinsky Sable round brush size 6 and a half inch golden Taclon angled brush. Make sure you have water jars and a rag or a paper towel for blotting. We're going to paint this sunflower in 10 simple steps. Now to get the sketch on your watercolor paper, you can either freehand sketch it or print the photo and trace it on using graphite paper or some other means of tracing. All right, the first step is to start with your lightest yellow. I'm using the lemon yellow color in my Paul Rubens set. With your round brush, paint this color inside of every single flower petal. Wet paint on dry paper, or also this is also called wet and dry. Use only enough water to get the paint flowing for you. It should be more pigment than water. This will yield the most brilliant yellow color, vibrant but not at all washed out. If you accidentally have too much water in your brush so that it ends up puddling on your paper, just blot your brush on the towel and then soak up that extra water from your paper with your damp brush. Step two, use a warm yellow. I'm using the Indian yellow on my palette. This is what we're gonna use to paint a first layer on all of the shadow shapes in each petal. Your light yellow layer should be completely dry by now. You can actually work your way around the flower in a clockwise manner, and this will help everything kind of dry out all in the same order. This does require careful planning, looking back and forth between your reference photo and your painting, just to make sure you're avoiding all the areas of the flower petals that are in the light, meaning the brightest yellow or the sunlit spots. This layer will probably take the longest because you are so carefully negative painting around the light areas. Step three. Use a warm red to paint a third layer in the shadows. I'm using this scarlet color in my pan set for the next layer. With the red, I paint over much of the Indian yellow, but I'm leaving little hints of it here and there. We are beginning to build the intense colors in the shadows, and with this layer of red, we start to get a strong sense of light and dark. Unlike the first two layers, which were pretty much just paint taken straight from the pan, you will want to adjust your values with the red by adding water to make the red lighter in certain areas, just depending on what you see in the reference photo. Use your mixing area on your palette to do this, and always remove any excess water on your paper towel before touching your paper with your brush. Step four, paint the darkest values in the petals using brown. I use the three browns on the right side of my palette sort of interchangeably here. The goal is just to outline some of the petals with brown and really intensify the dark shadows. Be sparing with this layer. You do not need to cover every single shadow shape this time. 
just the areas that need to go a little bit darker. Also, knowing which of your paints are transparent is going to be helpful as when you're starting to layer the third or fourth layer by this time, make sure that they're transparent so you can see all the colors underneath. If you're using a semi-transparent color, it's going to look murky. Really quick, if you feel like this video is maybe moving a little bit too fast, good news, it's available in real time. Just head over to Emily Olson Art where you can become a member of my Watercolor Mastery Membership. For just a small amount per month, you'll have access to over 100 real-time, fully narrated tutorials ranging from beginner to advanced. Each video tutorial gives you the ability to look right over my shoulder and watch every brush stroke. Learn to paint dogs, cats, portraits, landscapes, and so much more. And as a member, you can access our private Watercolor Mastery Facebook group where you can show off all of your amazing progress and receive feedback from other artists. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check that out. All right, let's get back to the video. Step five, paint a first layer in the center of the flower using brown. You can paint really quickly here since we'll need to add more layers over the top so it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth or even. Step six, paint the blue sky. Now for my sky, I chose this cobalt blue on my palette, but use any bright blue that appeals to you. I wanted my background to look loose and painterly, so I opted for wet and dry again with my half inch angled brush. Mix up enough water and paint on your palette to cover a large area and then use the flat edge of that angled brush to kind of carve around or paint around the petal edges. Work quickly so that you can resolve any wet edges before they dry. Step seven, paint a first layer on the leaves. For my leaves, for the first layer, I use this yellow green. It's my lightest green color on the palette just to paint all over the leaves and stems but I am leaving a small area at the top of the leaf completely white just to represent the brilliant sunlight hitting the leaf. And I also left a little strip of white on the left side of that fuzzy stem, which is also in the sunlight. Step eight, finish the center of the flower. I add a second layer of brown to the seedy center of the sunflower. And then to make black, I mix up Payne's gray and this burned sienna color. You could also use the black that's on your palette, but I just prefer to mix my own. I use the belly side of the brush to paint larger areas of the black quickly. And then where the flower begins to move or turn from the shadow into the light, I use a stippling motion with the tip of my round brush to paint the texture of the sunflower seeds, leaving little highlights between those brush marks. Step nine, paint a second layer on the leaves. Using a combo of Hooker's Green Brilliant and a little bit of Payne's Gray, I paint the shadow shapes onto the leaves all in one large shape. Now it might be tempting to paint around those little leaf veins that you're seeing during the step, but they're also in the shadow. So for now, just paint the whole area dark. Step 10 is to finish the leaves. So once the shadows on the leaves are mostly dry, mix up some more of your hooker's green and paint a third and final layer on the shadows. This is your chance to negative paint around those leaf veins and stem. And you can see how they still look lighter in value because we are layering our darker layer over the top. Now you can step back and inspect your painting at this point just to see if you missed anything, but if you used nice bold layers, it should look vibrant and realistic. So there is the finished sunflower. I highly recommend trying this Paul Rubens set of watercolor paints. In my opinion, they're every bit as good as some of the more expensive sets like Schmincke and Sennelier, which are more than twice the cost. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. Leave me a like and comment if you found this video helpful and check out these other videos about watercolor painting. I'll see you there.